In this module, I'm going to show you how to connect to a Raspberry Pi from your Mac, or OS X. OS X is a very popular operating system, and it connects to the Pi very well. Using built-in utilities, we're going to connect to the Raspberry Pi and communicate with it in several different ways. In this module, I'll show you how to communicate with your Pi, an easy way to send and receive files, a way to see if your Pi is running, and we'll also connect with a remote desktop, so there's an actual desktop on your screen so it looks like you're connected as if you'd be connected through a keyboard and monitor. So it'll be sort of a desktop within a desktop. So let's get started. As you can see here, I have a terminal window open. Now this is the standard terminal that comes with OS X. And the first thing I need to do is find my IP address. This is the address that's assigned to your Raspberry Pi so you can find it on your network. Most routers assign this address automatically, so you have to go and find it. In my case, I can log into my router and find my IP address here. This makes it pretty easy. But you may have to boot up your Raspberry Pi and have it connected to a monitor, and then find the IP address on the start screen. Okay, now that I know my IP address, it's time to connect. And I'll do that by typing in ssh pi at 10.0.31.1. A quick note, I did have to specify pi at in the IP address. Now I could type in ssh 10.0.31.7 and log in that way. Now if I typed it in that way, it would automatically try to log me in under the username that I'm logged into on my Mac. Since right now I'm logged in as Jeremy, it would try to log into the pi with the username of Jeremy. That's just something to keep in mind, but that's why I was explicit and typed in pi at 10.0.31.1. Another quick note, you may notice that I didn't have to enter a password when I just connected. This is because I have my SSH keys stored. I describe how to do that in a previous module in this course titled How to Set Up Passwordless Connections with SSH. So if you haven't set this up yet, you will be asked for a password. If you'd like to connect without a password, go back to that module and check it out. And now that we're connected, let's create a quick Python script. And here I'll type in a quick print statement. And now we'll run that. And as you can see, the script says, this is on my Raspberry Pi. That's because the script is being run off of the Raspberry Pi. And now I'm back here on my Mac desktop. And I've created a test PY file here also. Now this one says, this is from my Mac desktop. And I'll save it. Okay, now I've exited out of my Raspberry Pi, and I'm gonna check to see if the test PY is here on my machine. And it is. And of course, this one says this is from my Mac desktop. So what if I want to take this file and push it over to my Raspberry Pi and run it there? Turns out that's pretty easy, and we'll use something called SCP to do that. Okay, now as you can see, I have SCP test.py pi at 10.0.31.1, and then a colon and slash home slash pi. This is pretty self-explanatory, but what we're doing is we're copying our test.py that's here on my Mac desktop, we're sending it to 10.0.31.1 through the pi account user, and the location that we're gonna send it to is slash home slash pi. And again, if you don't have that passwordless access set up, it will ask for a password at this point. Now let's go back onto our Raspberry Pi and see if we've successfully pushed that file over. Okay, now we're connected to the Raspberry Pi again. And as you can see, there's our test.py. So let's run it and see what the contents are. Now, as you can see, this says this is from my Mac desktop. So what we've done here is taken a file that was on my Mac desktop and with a single command, sent it over to the Raspberry Pi and now it's on the Raspberry Pi desktop. This may not seem like much, but when you're dealing with tons of files, this is a huge time saver and it's much better than trying to do all your programming over SSH. Now, what if I wanna make some modifications to this file here on my Raspberry Pi and then send it back to my Mac desktop? It turns out that's actually pretty easy as well. So we'll open up our test PY on the Raspberry Pi. And I've changed the message to, this was on my desktop and now it's on the Pi. So now I wanna pull that file from the Raspberry Pi to my desktop. So now I have the SCP command kind of in reverse. It's SCP pi at the IP address, and then a colon with the location on the Raspberry Pi of where our file is, which is slash home slash pi test.py. And then after that, I have a dot, which means I want to store it right here. 
So I want to take that test py from the Raspberry Pi and store it here. And as you can see, it was a success. And now I open up this file in an editor and I can see this was on my desktop, now it's on the Pi. Except now it's back on the desktop again. And this is how SCP works. And as I said, SCP can be very valuable when you have a lot of files that you're developing on your desktop and you want to push them over to the Pi. And then maybe you make some modifications on the Pi and you want to pull them back onto your desktop. SCP is your friend in this case. So now I'm SSH'd into my Raspberry Pi and what I need to install is something called XRDP. And what that is is an RDP server for the Raspberry Pi. RDP stands for Remote Desktop Protocol. And now that that's installed, we can bring up our Remote Desktop Connection program on the Mac, which ironically enough is used to connect to Windows clients, and we'll put in our IP and press Connect. Now you will get this error message that says it cannot verify the identity, just go ahead and click Connect anyway. As you can see here, you're presented with a login screen, so you'll log in with your usual Raspberry Pi credentials. And within seconds, you're here at a Raspberry Pi desktop. And this is the exact desktop you would see on a monitor if you had a monitor plugged in. Now you may not use this much, but if you want to do anything on the desktop or you want to build desktop applications for the Pi, this is an excellent way to do it because we're actually just sitting here on my Mac desktop, but I'm remoted in so that I have the desktop showing here. And that's how easy it is. Now I've used a couple different IP addresses in this course because I've used a couple of different Raspberry Pis. One of them had the desktop installed and one of them didn't. Now what can I do to check to make sure that the Pi is up and running? That's actually pretty easy. Now here I've typed in ping 10.0.31.21. Ping is a command that sends a packet out to a host and if the host is up and running it responds and sends it back and says everything's okay. And as we can see here, my Raspberry Pi is up and running and networking is enabled. The ping command is very handy for things like this. And what you can do is ping each of the addresses on your network to make sure that your Pi is up and running and ready for connections. In this module, we've covered how to communicate with the Raspberry Pi from your Mac, or OS X. And OS X is actually the operating system that runs on your Mac. OS X comes with some good built-in utilities, so it makes it a seamless connection between your Mac desktop and a Raspberry Pi. Now I've shown you how to communicate with your Pi, how to see if it's up and running, how to send and receive files, and how to connect with a remote desktop so you can have your Pi desktop come in on your Mac desktop. I hope this was clear and easy to follow. Now stay tuned for the next module.